Here's another project getting started on. It's a Hurricane Sally damaged dock. It's been here for quite some time. It's probably seen uh, better life. Uh, the woods, some of the woods rotting in it and all that, and a lot of deck boards come off. But we're gonna take this thing out, uh, the place it's in. We're gonna add another 20 foot up here to where this bamboo is, because I guess when water comes up, it's, it gets kind of mushy walking on the dock. We'll go ahead and uh, tear this out, get it over to the reclaimed center that my wife runs and does pretty good at and uh, go ahead and get it all put back in again with some uh, larger diameter poles and go back with the through flow decking. Through flow decking is a lot easier on your feet, cooler, also releases the uh, storm surge that shoots up between the deck, gives the uh, dock a lot better survivability rate during the hurricanes. So Hunter's been over here demoing this dock today while I pushed the barge across and now we're pulling the framing up. He took the decking off and they got some ropes around there with the cross ties. And it looks like today it put some screw down augers in to help hold the dock down, which looks like it might've done a good job because uh, the dock's not pulled up. Well, in some areas it's pulled up a little bit, but we just like to put our poles down deeper than that don't happen. It's a lot of extra work. Plus I don't think the ropes hanging down there look very attractive. Beat that mud off the side so we're not walking in. Chief says, I wanna, I want to smell that. Might be something in there. Hey, there's a mullet laying up on the deck. He jumped out, landed on the deck, and died. Poor fish. Grab it there. Yeah. Okay. There's no bolts in this thing at all, is there? It's all nailed? It's all nailed. Oh, good. We need to check it when we get up there. I don't remember seeing the turnoff spigot by the dock. Or turn off valve. Watch out. I knew I was going to do that. <laughs> you alright? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. I missed you? Good. Okay. I didn't know it was in the bind until I heard that string start popping. All right, let's grab, um, oh, you got the other one over there? Is it too tight? hooked on that nail. Okay, let me see if I can get it. Watch the board. It's got the board too. Good. So yank these poles 
uh, move forward. Chief, what are you doing, buddy? I didn't even hardly pull on that. About nine, ten foot in the ground. That's up. It's muddy over here. Yeah. It's gonna smell good up here with all these poles. Once these barnacles start drying out. Hey, we grab my jacket there. some anti-pull-out blocks on these poles here to uh, help pull them down the ground a little bit and also I'm going with eight inch pilings these are uh, probably five to six inch pilings and they put the poles in upside down according to my recommendations I always like to put the bigger end in the ground the bigger end in the ground flares out makes it a little bit more difficult for the piling to be pulled out with the storm uplift uh, we got small in the ground once you break the suction, you've got nothing but a smaller pole to pull right out just like that. A lot of contractors will, right under contract, are going to sell you 8 inch pilings and then they'll flip the poles upside down so that the biggest part of the piling, the butt, is up in the air. And that's kind of, I don't think it's being very honest. Um, if you measure our poles, if we sell you a 6 inch uh, piling dock, you'll have 6 inches of piling. That'll be the smallest part of the pole will be in the air. If you sell you an 8 inch piling dock, the smallest pole part of the piling will be in the air, uh, which would be the 8 inch part, and the biggest part will be in the, in the ground, which is typically 9 to 10 inches. We stack that up a little bit better when you're done. Yeah, we pulled up over here with the barge and all that. A couple of customers up the bayou came down and said, hey, could you put our poles back down? And every single one of them, uh, the pilings are upside down. And so that's exactly why they pulled out. The only reason why this guy didn't pull out all the way is probably because he put those screw down anchors in, actually helped hold his dock down a little bit better. I'm surprised it held so good in that mud though, because this is nothing but mud. <laughs> You guys like these uh, continual videos of what's going on just kind of watching the work in action let me know and I'll keep keep them up I want to say hi to August he has been off of YouTube for a while I think he got put in YouTube jail for whatever reason I don't know why nicest guy in the world always leaves me good comments but he's back on so it's nice to see you leaving comments August I appreciate it stay out of trouble
good progress over here. Got a platform tore off, a little bit of the walkway, all the pilings pulled out, put on a barge. So we'll be taking those over to the boat ramp and getting them hauled off to the reclaim center and then bringing some more pilings over here so we can get them set. We're probably gonna go with the eight inch poles. We're definitely gonna put them 10 foot in the ground because that's a lot of mud out here. Got me a ride along partner today in the Traco. Chief decided to get up here, it's nice and warm. Getting all of the trash bundled up now with some straps so we can get it transferred over to our trailer we got here at the boat ramp. It makes it a lot easier and have to tote all the stuff up to the front of the yard. Just bundle it up, put it on the trailer and haul it, haul it off. Got the majority of the dock and the boathouse tore out and hauled off to the dump and to the recycling center. So now we're getting some more strings set up in the yard. We're going to run this dock back in the yard just a little bit further because it gets kind of wet right here during high tide. So about another 15 foot back into the yard. And you can see we've changed over from the little five inch poles that the previous contractor put in to some eight and nine inch poles. There's a difference right there. They're all going to be at least 10 foot in the ground. We got some pull out blocks on them. Nice chilly day here at 28 degrees. check real quick started spinning again so we're going to try to get it straightened up. Perfect. Good? 
Alright. How about our depth? Right there, ready. Oh good man, that's a good good stopping point right there guys. Let's try to find another one kind of matches that pole. Find that one right here that I got on top of a minute ago. This one right here? Yeah. Try to keep them consistent. You can get it? Alright. Yeah, I thought so too. another eight nine inch 20 foot piling here rain treated we're gonna get the chain around it pick it up guy is gonna measure it off for the uh, proper placement of the uh, piling wrap you get that installed on there so we don't have any rot out of these poles later on all that piling wrap is installed with uh, stainless steel nails also measure down three foot on the piling. I'm going to leave the pilings two foot above the deck, but I like to leave extra foot for cutting the pole off because vibrating these poles and sometimes they like to splinter up and break up. So we try to keep those looking good for the customer. And then we measure down another 14 inches. That's just the elevation we're going with on this piling wrap here to try to stay about a foot above high tide. And we've had to add a little bit here because you got a little bit deeper water. So we've got a five foot wrap and then we got a two and a half foot wrap we're putting on there to make sure we get at least a foot of penetration down into the mud. I can get that piling wrap as tight as possible, it just looks a lot better. It keeps all the animals out. set on the dock the platform got the boathouse pole set those are eight inch 35 foot poles keeping it up really high because he's got a high fly bridge on his uh, bay boat we got some poles to set for the um, finger pier on the outside that'll be three foot wide and then we're doing another platform on the back side it'll be 10 by 16 foot we'll also have a little jet ski lift over here on the side of the uh, platform on the right hand side with a little slip that'll lift his uh, john boat up Project's coming along real good. We got everything framed up. Got the uh, through flow decking installed on it. It's five foot wide. Screw down. Got the water line reinstalled out here. We got a spigot that runs to the boathouse. Also has a spigot that runs over there where the jet ski lift's gonna be and a fish cleaning table. Got all of our scaffolding set up. Got the boathouse uh, band put in place. Lift beams put up. This is a really tall one. He's got a 13 foot high boat with a little fly bridge on it. So he wants to be high enough where he can get his boat up underneath there without having to uh, fold the flybridge bit down coming in. A 10 by 15 foot platform out here. He's gonna have a little jet ski lift here, which will actually be lifting a John boat. Got a small John boat that'll fit in this area right here. Pretty cool little setup. Front side of the boathouse, got a 10 by 16 foot platform. It goes over to a three foot walkway down the other side. Guys got the uh, rafter started. All two by six framing, two by eight hips and ridge. Started some of the collar ties up top. Looking real good. It's a five on 12. This is stick framing. When you do sticks, stick framing, it means you pretty much cut everything to fit. You don't use trusses 
Everything is uh, cut with a little bird mouth in it. That's a little notch in a tuba six that sits right on top of the tuba 12s, locks it in place. And then we hurricane clip that down to the uh, top band.